In this video, we will be giving a tutorial on understanding pediatric x-rays and growth plates. In orthopedics, x-rays are the most useful method of diagnostic imaging, whereas other imaging helps to tease out uncertainties one may have from the initial x-ray. An important point one needs to always consider when interpreting any orthopedic x-ray is whether the x-ray is of a child or an adult, because pediatric x-rays differ from adult x-rays. So how do pediatric x-rays differ from adult x-rays? Children are still growing, whereas adults are not. And because of this, there are the following main differences. Number one, children possess growth plates, also known as physes, in their bones, and these can be mistaken for fractures. So a contralateral x-ray is useful, if uncertain. In general, Growth plates close at age 14 in girls and age 16 in boys. Number two, children possess beneficial growth factors which give children remodeling potential due to differential physial growth. Concerning remodeling, remember the following. The closer the fracture to the growth plate, the greater the remodeling potential. Number three, the growth plate or physis is the weakness area around a child's joint. So if the force of an injury is at the joint level, children tend to sustain growth plate injuries rather than ligamentous tears or dislocations. Growth plate injuries are important because they occur in typical patterns and so are described according to a special classification system called the Salter-Harris classification. And these can be appreciated on an X-ray. The word Salter can be used to easily remember the Salter-Harris classification. One for straight across, two for above, that is through the metaphysis, three for lower, that is through the epiphysis, four for through everything, that is through the metaphysis and epiphysis, and five for crush. This classification has implications on the management and prognosis of the fracture. Lastly, number four, children's bones are softer and pliable, meaning they bend and not so much break. Therefore, in children's x-rays, you will see more green stick and buckle fractures. Let's take a look at how these four concepts can be recognized on pediatric x-rays. This x-ray shows a frontal and lateral view of the patient's left ankle. Can you find the growth plate injury and determine its Salter-Harris classification? Pause the video now if you'd like to give it a go. This case demonstrates the importance of using more than one view when examining any x-ray, as the growth plate injury is far easier to appreciate on the lateral view. The fracture extends through the growth plate and into the metaphysis, but spares the epiphysis, making it a type 2 Salter-Harris injury. Can you find the pathology in this x-ray? Pause the video now. Once again, this is a type 2 Salter-Harris injury with a buckle fracture of the distal radius. What about this x-ray? Pause the video now to find and classify the pathology. This one may be a little tricky, but the radial epiphysis has completely dissociated from the metaphysis and now lies here. The epiphysis and metaphysis both seem to be spared, however, making this a type 1 Salter-Harris injury. So, what have we learned? Always consider the age and gender of a patient when interpreting an orthopedic x-ray as growth plates close at age 14 in girls and 16 in boys. Never mistake a growth plate for a fracture, but keep in mind that growth plate injuries are very common in children and these should be classified according to the Salter-Harris classification system. Keep a lookout for green stick and buckle fractures in the pliable bones of children as well. Thanks for watching.